Welcome to the official podcast. This is another amazing podcast episode being played directly in your car or computer or phone or I don't know where the ever you choose to listen to this Fio. shit. Your fi- yeah, your Fio, your uh, Chinese bootleg Blu-ray player, whatever. So I'm I'm Andrew and we got Charlie Kaya Jackson, of course. But then we got special guest, Mr. Nick, otherwise known as Pogo. Nick, could you please give us a quick roundabout about what you do on the internet? Yeah, sure, man. Thanks for having me on. So basically, uh, I'll go through a movie and I'll record a whole bunch of sounds and I'll kind of glue them together to make music. Um, So think of it as like a jigsaw puzzle of sound, basically. So the idea is you listen to your favorite film in music form. That's real. That's that's a pretty good way to summarize it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you came prepared. (laughs) He's already making us. What do we do? He's got his script and he's reading it to the. Do we know what we do? Yeah, he's got it. Got us on the ropes here. <laughs> Masturbate, yes or do? no? <laughs> Nick, could you give us a nice summation of what we do, but in those kind of words for us to use? Nick, actually, uh, okay, so let's talk about this on air. Let's give us a summation of what you thought we do. <laughs> well, there's this um, really, I don't know how to describe him. He's this really nice guy, but um, he, um, he's been pulling everyone's ear trying to get me onto your show for a long time now. <laughs> And um, here, here we are finally. And um, I took a listen to some of your podcasts and I looked at some of the guests you had. And geez, yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed. I'm really ha- happy to be on finally. It's, um, I hear you guys aren't aren't available for like another two weeks or something because of the holiday period. Basically. Well, yeah, we, we wanted to, we wanted to take Christmas off uh, for the first. We we haven't really taken a week off since the start of the podcast. So I wanted to take so Christmas how often off do without you do having this? to edit every week. Oh wow. Well, wow. not only that, once a cool. week. Not only that, but uh, I'm moving during, like, literally the day after Christmas is when I start my move. So, I just figured even if we did want to do something, it'd be really difficult for me to do an episode <laughs> during that time. Mm-hmm. And then we've got other guests signed on as well for a few weeks. So yeah, it's busy over the next big, few big weeks. names, huge. Stay tuned, yeah, everybody. massive. You'd massive. recognize every single one of them. May or may not be Donald Trump. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying stay tuned. <laughs> You'll find out. Oh man, you got to get me on that panel. <laughs> <laughs> you can I do the moderator. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. You came in guns blazing. So, for our listeners, to give you a background, Nick came in accusing us of being pro pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say accusing, but <laughs> alluding to the possibility. Yeah, strong suspicion. Mm. I honestly don't know no, where well, he could have gotten it- that. No, the thing is, there is a culture out there that is supporting it. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know what they go by now. LGBTP, P being pedosexual. And um, I found a <laughs> bunch of links in your channel um, of this fellow uh, talking about it. This is but a- I, d- I didn't see anyone actually speaking against it. So I was like, are these guys oh, for or against pictures of parents sucking on their baby's arms? <laughs> It's a question. So I didn't know. That's an important question so, to ask. So uh, I'll Someone's, explain the situation, yeah. please. Yeah, explain it, please. <laughs> so Nick, we have hangouts with our patrons sometimes. And we were talking okay. about the topic of, uh, you know, those families that kiss their kids on the lips? That <laughs> topic yes. came up. And I asked, like, do you guys know anybody like that? Because that's the weirdest shit. And then we started it Googling is. about, you know, parents who kiss their parents children on their lips and it led to a bunch of results of you know uh Jesus. women kissing well, little imagine. kids yeah basically yeah. so we just shared wow. photos of that in our server to <laughs> mock them and then of course the talk of pedophilia came up and the video which we shared of amos e whose argument <laughs> is that pedophilia is oh, a-okay because even small babies can consent to sucking dick which is his right. actual argument i'm not paraphrasing here yeah no i, I remember yeah now, Nick, I'm <laughs> yeah. just I'm just really glad that you didn't happen to stop into our uh, recording server probably a few days after we had a uh, rice pirate Mick on, who is uh, half <laughs> Chinese and visits China often, and decided that his proof of how they just let children shit in the streets was to put pictures of it in our Discord. So you would have been bombarded <laughs> oh, with like three or four personally taken photos of small Chinese kids not wearing clothes in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for some reason, Mick was really exuberant to share with us. We're, we're not accusing Mick of being a pedophile. No, not at all. But we're just saying, stay tuned. In, in context, it made... We're alluding to it, though. In context, it made perfect sense. But out of context, it uh, we asked him to remove the photos. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it took me aback. 
just to give you a peace of mind, for some reason, pedophiles always come up during the podcast, but uh, we always make sure to let everyone know our opinion, which is they need to be beat up. My uh, favorite superhero Avenger actually is Captain Alaska. Do you know him, Nick? No, I'm not aware. Sorry. So Captain Alaska, he's... Uh, or, he's a real uh, person. Uh, yeah, real person. He calls himself the Alaskan Avenger. Apparently this guy, I, I forget his name now, but you can look him up on Google. He would go into the sex offender registry, look up people who were uh, convicted of child molestation, and then break into their homes and beat them up. So good, nice guy. Alaskan Avenger, if you're listening to this, we'd love to have you on. Uh, well, Kyle would. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure he's in jail. Well, yeah, but One if you ever, hope. you know, if anybody pays bail or something, you know, I, I have a couch, you can sleep on it. I bet you're cool. <laughs> if, any, if any heroes out there want to bail out this madman, and then, and then also fly him to Germany to stay at Kaya's. Dude, do you know how many pedophiles there are in Germany? He have a field day here. <laughs> when I was little, young in Germany, uh, I was always scared to play outside because there were so many news of little children being kidnapped and then turning up like chopped up in trash bags a few days later. Well, that doesn't sound like pedophilia. Yeah, it sounds more murder than anything. Well, sounds murder like and pedophilia. People don't kidnap. People don't kidnap little kids and kill them when they just want to play video games shortly before. They rape them. Germany is scary for kids. Well, let's let's find out. Nick, your thoughts? Do you murder the children or do you rape them first? Well, you'd have to rape them first, I'd assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, one I mean, get like, some use out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, like why? Why would you go to the extreme of kidnapping them? That's a good right, point. Well, there goes your career. That's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's like a shit. What was that show where you're like Hannibal, but the guy fuck. What was the detective's name in Hannibal who can put himself in the killer's position? Oh, uh, Will. Will, yeah, Will Graham. You're like you can empathize with the yeah, yeah, I, killers. That's it. I like that. Walk through their yeah. progress. This was his design. First, he kidnaps the child. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't mean you're a killer. It just means you can. Wait, Kaya, does he know. put on the scary voice while describing it? Guys, well, I, n- I think I think I know what the killer did. First, he came into the door. <laughs> <laughs> then he got the child. Kinda. Well, you know the movie editing they do, where even if he doesn't change his voice, they add a little bit of bass. They tune out all the other. Uh, noises you know mm-hmm. it's like this was his design first <laughs> i break into the home i disable the alarm system i put little uh, butter on the floor so the mother slips and breaks her neck <laughs> then i diddle the children i escape it's the perfect plan <laughs> it's more like an ed and Nettie scam than anything <laughs> <laughs> and then we sell them back for a quarter <laughs> and then we get jawbreakers double d well, all this brings me to the, the question, Nick. We, we didn't just bring you on as the resident pedophilia expert. We actually wanted to talk about your music as well. I know that's kind of just a side thing you do besides pedophilia advocation and going against it. I wanted to talk about the side of music because I've kind of dabbled in it and I know Kaya has as well. It's extraordinarily difficult to even make a shitty quality song. So I just, I'd want to know like how the process starts. Do you start with, you know, for you taking a movie and then... Where do you start? That's a better way of going about it. <laughs> uh, well, it's different nowadays. I used to just comb through a movie looking for sounds that's, that, that are good. Like basically you want to look for voices that have actual notes in them, which is actually, believe it or not, something that exists. Um, this was way back before Autotune and Melodyne, which is the software they all use. Uh, you had to actually find voices that had some kind of natural melody to them. Um, and then you look for chords, you know, you look for nice musical bits, you look for sounds like guns and punches and kicks and things that would make good drums. And then you put those, you start just throwing ideas around. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Nowadays, you just kind of put chords together uh, first. Like, I want to find a chord structure. For me, that's the most important thing nowadays is is not so much the voices or the percussion or the sounds, but actually the kind of harmonic sort of um, emotional journey that the song takes you on. Um, what was the first movie you did this way? Sorry? What was the, the uh, first movie you've done like that? Oh, geez. I th- it would have been... Mm, I think it would have been Oliver, which is a musical from the 60s, the late 60s. And then Alice in Wonderland came after that because my girlfriend brought home the DVD. And um, then, yeah, it went onto YouTube and, um, yeah, the rest is history. How long ago was that? When was like your 2007, first, uh, I think it was. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you've yeah, been, so on, been the, about... on the site for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years now. Yeah, there should be some kind of anniversary video for Alice or something like that. But I don't know. It's um, an interesting thing happens when you publicize your passion. It um, Everyone who likes it kind of takes ownership of it. It's not just you, you, you know, um, exploring your sort of feelings anymore. It's it's almost like you're pandering, like you're you're delivering to a large audience with expectations now, whether you like it or not. And um, <clears throat> that's a difficult kind of a mindset to to wade yourself through. Yeah. So so you mean like you're not making the video so much for yourself anymore? No. You're trying to. Yeah. No. It, it is very much like. Okay, I've got 660-something thousand subs now. Um, I've done all this work for all these different companies. I've played all these different shows. Um, you, you have to sort of kid yourself into thinking that your next creation is just for you because yeah. it won't be. It, it, it'll go on YouTube. It'll get hits. It'll get people commenting, up, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, and that's something I'd warn people about. If there's something you love to do and you do it for yourself mostly and almost that's what makes you keep doing it, um, you got to think twice before you turn it into a business, man. It, it can screw it. Yeah, I can definitely say that. That's a ve- yeah. Yeah, that's a very brutally honest answer. Most people would kind of keep that to themselves, but I think that's very refreshing yeah. that you're open about that. Yeah. So okay, well, is so how much of this is part of your day job? Do you uh, is this your side project? Is YouTube your main thing, and then you do other things on the side? Where does it like? What do you do normally? Yeah. Well, the cool thing about YouTube is every, whatever you put out comes back in. So if you make this video of you in a Star Trek uniform singing this song that you've made and it gets lots of views, you know, there are companies that are watching that saying, hey, we want that for our product or our TV show. Can you do this for us? And so um, that's the great thing about viral videos. You know, you, you get back some some work opportunities and that's how it works for me. So, um, yeah, what pays my bills is pretty much album sales and um, commissions from studios, etc. Well, that is only true for the part of youtube that actually has any skill like you're you're a musician last well not last week technically but we had on a another musician slash shit poster who also told us that after he made his videos he got a bunch of offers from even what did he say guys like cartoon network cartoon network yeah oh but wow. of course, that only happens when you actually have something to offer and have skill. Like nobody ever came to us and said, "Hey, you want to put your podcast on TV?" <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not. Yeah, I guess we're so. not holding out yeah. for it. Because I watched a YouTube video the other day. It's like, it's like two million hits, but it's just a musical from that Disney Mulan movie, and all they've done is just amplified every time someone uses the the letter S. Oh, and, okay. uh, well, that's just a meme video. Yeah, yeah that doesn't count. Yeah, it's that's just a meme cool. video. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a division. Do you think that guy's working for Cartoon Network now? Probably. Well, it's an interesting point. I mean, if it gets two million hits for, you know, a Disney catalog film, then I guess from a marketing point of view, who cares what it is so long as it gets the film out there? Yeah, it's very true. It's true. So, you know, we might think that's stupid, but Disney's looking at it going, well, there's two million hits for Mulan. We haven't sold a few Blu-rays in a while. Let's let's actually maybe get them to do another one. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. (laughs) So, um, so how much, how much of your work, specifically the pulling songs out of entertainment comes from your own repertoire of what you get into and how much of it is kind of meeting that consumer demand? Like, do you do Game of Thrones? Cause you know, oh, everyone's going to share a Game of Thrones video or do you actually watch the show? What's the uh, balance on that? Well, I, I want it to be like a hundred percent, just what I want to do, but, um, it, it, yeah, look, it, it isn't always that way. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, um, I'd happily consider Game of Thrones. I'd love, I'd love to do a Breaking Bad thing. <laughs> Please do. Uh, it's, yeah, oh, look, I'd probably take Breaking Bad over Game of Thrones at the moment. I think there's just more mm-hmm. there. Um, but like, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's mostly just doing what I want to do, and it's, it sounds kind of narcissistic, but I, I've never gotten out of bed in the morning and said I'm going to make a video that gets t- you know 11 million hits in the next two years. Um, it doesn't work like that, man. You know, you just you do what you want to do. You do what you're best at doing. Um, if you don't love what you do, you're not going to get good at it. So that's that's what has to come first, as narcissistic as it might sound. Right. I don't think it comes across as narcissistic at all. I think yeah, that's the best advice so. you can offer. Instead yeah. of trying to meet what's going to be popular, just do it for your own enjoyment. Yeah. Like I could come out with pogo requests or something like that, you know, and only do requests, but I'm not going to love what I do. And I think that'll come across. 
So then would it... Because I'm, I'm not doing it out of inspiration. I'm doing it out of obligation. Right. So would it be safe to say that none of the songs you've done have been really just for fans? There, or are there any that you can let us know that you've never said? Give us a little secret. Uh, I've never done anything for, for fans, no. And often I get accused <laughs> of not fan servicing enough. Somebody clipped that. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> out of context. Sorry, say again. Nick hates his fans. Yeah. Don't worry. We, we, got, got, we got our sound bite, Nick. Oh, Don't yeah, worry. You, yeah, you, you could sound bite that. <laughs> Can you make oh, okay. a song out of this, funny I've got man? A Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that's the right way of going about it. Yeah, at, at some point, even if you did that, I don't think you would still uh, satisfy everybody because once you get big, it's just so impossible to satisfy everybody. Yes. And I think it's even harder to satisfy yourself at the end of the day. If you mm. take a request, so let's say 51% of people vote on something, it's just going to piss off the other 49%. There's always going to be a yeah. divide. So you might yeah. as well, if, if people are going to get pissed off, you might as well take the choice that makes you happy rather than some other Yeah, subsection. that's right. Yeah, that's look, whatever you say or do, someone's going to hate it and someone's going to love it. So fuck it. Just just do what you want to do. Yeah. <sighs> This has all been really good advice for anyone out there that's trying to get into the internet realm of, you know, creating stuff. I think it's really good <clears throat> Just, advice to do it for the sake yeah. of your own enjoyment instead of trying to meet numbers or have these grand expectations and just pandering to what's popular at the time. It depends what you want, because if you want to have a huge PewDiePie kind of channel, you have to be able to wear two hats. You have to be able to be an entrepreneur and an artist at the same time. And that's fucking hard, man. Like, that's not a cap you can... You can't wear those two hats simultaneously. It's not possible. So, you know, you're, you're either heads down in your studio not giving a fuck about the world or you're out there interacting with people in the comment section, um, you know, saying yes to requests, having polls, doing Q&As. And I find those two headspaces just wildly incompatible. I completely Wildly agree. incompatible because... Yeah. Yeah, on the one hand, you're focused on what does everyone else want me to do, and on in the studio, you're focused on what do I want to do. So I, I don't know how PewDiePie does it, actually. I, I really have no idea. I mean, there's a lot of conflict where you're like, man, I want to spend the next week working on this big project that only I'm going to find entertaining and funny, and it's just what I want to do, versus, you know, exactly. oh, I want to make this thing that's really popular right now that I know people will like. Maybe there's yeah. a correlation between the two. Maybe there's something that he really wants to do that also his fans also really want him to do. I think that's where he finds most of his success. I mean, that could be what he enjoys is giving people exactly what they want. You know, yeah, that, that's what yeah. I mean, yeah. But, well, but then by that point... Go ahead, Guy. No, you, please. I mean, by that point, civilized though... Man. <laughs> but by that point, it's, you know, the enjoyment isn't so much the project or the final result for him. It's the uh, the spoils of that project, you know? It's what he gets from putting it out there rather than from the creation of it itself. <clears throat> well, what PewDiePie well, did, though, is, you know, he's always the example that comes up of a successful YouTube channel. But uh, I would say that he's at this point so successful that he's an outlier. You know, I, I don't think you could even consider him as an example because what he has done in the last decade is, uh, you know, gameplay material, the usual you know, let's play Minecraft, whatever it is, he played the amnesia, scary game stuff. And now he's yeah. so popular, he actually can do just whatever the hell he wants. He doesn't have to care if Disney fires him. He doesn't have to give a fuck if, you know, YouTube isn't happy with him, his politics, his agenda, or the kind of videos he does. But that just might not be good uh, advice for somebody who's just starting out. Yeah. Do you think if, it, if let's say, YouTube doesn't exist in some made-up fantasy world, what happens to PewDiePie then? Uh, Would he not be... I don't think he could transfer his brand across to something else. I don't think it's possible for any well, like YouTube-based personality to. You mean I think like if him? YouTube did cease to exist, probably the only remnant of the YouTube era would be the official <laughs> podcast, and I would welcome that future, in all honesty. Of course. Well, we'll definitely need a new job then if uh, YouTube goes under. So how can we find a new job, guys? Put the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, Kaya, how can we find a we new job? We already did. <laughs> Check us out on Spotify, you fucks. Jesus, Andrew, you're not picking up on the subtle cue. We'd be going on ZipRecruiter and advertising <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> here's, here's us talking about beating up pedophiles. Would you like to hire us? <clears throat> But yeah, uh, so on ZipRecruiter, you can upload your resume and people can hire you. 
So the best part is you don't have to go to individual sites like hundreds of those job hunting sites and upload your resume in each one or fill out hundreds of little fields for your name and address. Instead, you can go to ZipRecruiter. You know, you might have some skills. You might have just graduated from college. Maybe you're still in college. And there you can get a job. Or you can post a job and have a qualified response from people looking for jobs in under how many Within hours? Within a day. Well, okay, Within you day, spoiled yeah. it, thanks. <laughs> yeah, come on, well, Jackson. This was Kaya's right. one contribution to this episode, and you ruined it. That's not true. I talked about my Alaskan <laughs> Avenger. I know, I'm kidding. Whatever. I'm if kidding. you need to hire somebody to beat people up, you can go to ziprecruiter.com slash official and post a job for free. It's fun. ZipRecruiter.com <laughs> slash official. One more time. Try it for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash official. We'll see you there. Go there now. Get a job. Nick, what's the strangest job you've ever had? That's what's the worst question. job you've ever had? Yeah, the worst job I've ever had. Oh, well, I mean, that's easy. You know, you go back to your teens, probably mm, yeah. Yeah, filling shelves at a, at a supermarket. That's the worst job I've ever had. Okay, well, I guess that's like everybody. That doesn't count. What is like the... Let's say a commission or something that yep. you accepted that you immediately regretted once you started working on it. That's what Did I was. Did that ever ask. happen? Um. Oh, geez. I, I think maybe. Yeah, probably the iCarly thing. What? Because it's yeah. Fill, it, fill it, us it, in and everyone listening on what that is. I love iCarly. Uh, Icar- well, uh, iCarly is um that Nickelodeon TV show that packed up a few years ago. They did their last season. And that's what they wanted me to do was to give them like a bang to go out on. So we did like a, a, a video for that. iCarly mix. I, I don't know. I can't even remember what I called it. We all love iCarly uh, here on the podcast. This is spooky. So what happens? Wait, you're kidding me. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> well, hey, it's hey. not like I've caught up on the war or anything. I liked it when I was a kid. And I think we all kind of liked it. Yeah, yeah, we don't good. condone Dan Schneider, but we like iCarly. Childhood memories. I just thought it was a fun show. As a kid to watch. Oh, okay. Wait, how old are you guys? Uh, I'm 26, so I, I don't know when I watched it, man. How old are you? Uh, I'm 29. I'm almost 30. Okay. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah, yeah, I'm 23. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah. No, so I, Kylie's probably, I I was, a that was, yeah, I, I kind of missed that that period. But, okay, um, so go on. What, what did they have you do? Uh, well, it's not so much what the, I mean. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, most clients I've had have just let me do what I do, and that's just that's one of the biggest blessings I think I've had. But <clears throat> sometimes you get assets, like you sign the contract, and then you get the footage and you get the sounds, and that's when you realize really like what you can do and what you can't do, which is not how I do it anymore. Um, and yeah, it's I just I don't hate the show. I just I I just I really don't like it. It's just not the sort of thing I watch. <laughs> well, I imagine, yeah. no, I'm I imagine if I had happens. to scrub through like thirteen seasons worth of iCarly listening to every like ooh and I, ah, I'd be pretty uh, put off by it as well. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. What did yeah, Dan you know Schneider it. just like send you his private collection of feet photos? Yeah, I heard about that. That was weird. He's a weird <laughs> man. He's a weird, weird yeah. man. <laughs> What's her name, ma'am? She was in that school of rock. Miranda, Co- Miranda Cosgrove. Cosgrove. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She seems like a Wait, nice what's person. What's she doing now? All I see of her every once in a while, I'll check up, uh, I'll check up on all of the actors, and she, all she shares is like innocent little selfies and photos of her with children at a hospital or whatever. Yeah, she uh, seems like a nice person. And uh, what's that? Um, Christina Ritchie, she she did um, a movie not a while ago called um, Black Snake Moan. Oh, really? And, um, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you were ever into Christina Ritchie, but fuck me, man. She's hot in this film. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Who is I it? Write that she, okay. Oh, you'll, you'll know who it was. Who it is. You remember the girl from Casper? From Ca- I saw or, that movie so many what? times. Or do you remember uh, Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family movies, the early ones? Oh, and then they did oh old Stone Face. Y- y- well, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, and um, she's yeah, she was in a movie with Sam Jackson. Oh, she is now. Yeah, yeah. Fuck me. yeah and in this movie, cutie. she gets all her clothes off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to the, like to hit. Looking forward to the musical remix of that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm just checking for samples. <laughs> yeah. I'll just sample a bit of this. What noise do her titties make when she pulls her top off? 
<laughs> oh, I like your thinking. <laughs> That's my weekend have, project. Have we, have we subtly inspired the next Pogo remix with this? Could be. The various oh, yes. Black Snake moans. Black Snake mix. There you go. I like it. What, what's all right? That's a good question. What what's one like uh, female or male? I don't care. One celebrity crush that you guys just thought was just above all the rest. Oh, I'll go, one hottie. I'll go ahead and step forward. Now it's easy. Jennifer Love Hewitt. My God. Anyone remember hey. her? From Ghost Rider or whatever the fuck that's called. It's like the TV show. It's like Ghost Gynecologist or whatever. Yeah, I don't watch that. I'm yeah, talking about Ghost like, Doctor. I don't know. It, it, I think it's Ghost Whisperer, but She's I'm talking big, like yeah, that's it. I'm talking like Jackie Chan tuxedo era Jennifer Love Hewitt. We don't like to talk about that, Charlie. Please never bring up the tuxedo again. Tuxedo is a fantastic movie. Jennifer oh. God, Jennifer Love Hewitt, if you're listening to this, keep up the great work, and you're welcome to come on. Oh, she was oh. in I Know What You Did Last Summer. Yeah, she oh. was the main girl. That, how old is she now? Like 68, 70, something like that? Uh, <laughs> 79, so she'd be like 38. <laughs> Yeah, Herb. she's 38. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah, she has giant tits, so that's kind of cool. She never used to. She, <laughs> she, she had augmentation checks and don't encourage that. She was better natural. No, it should be 48. Well, yeah, so that's what the podcast is, Nick. You were asking. Good. We get celebrities' birthday wrong. Oh, she is 38. I'm an idiot. I'm glad you fact-checked yourself so extensively throughout <laughs> all of this. Oh. I would have been insulted if you didn't. Yeah, it was... Uh really intense for me so let's who's who's got another celebrity crush i don't know um i'll i have a kind of newer one i'll throw this out there uh rashida jones i think in the right lights not always but i think sometimes she's really attractive she looks like a like a a common girl exactly she's got she's got good natural features like i think she just looks pretty like it's hard to describe yeah. I hate how Google listens to me. I started typing in Rashida Jones, and then it said slash Jennifer Love Hewitt in the Google search. <laughs> and then the top recommended result is, of course, Pornhub. Has nothing to do with them. Just clickbaited title. Uh, that brings me to my next question for you, Nick. Do you like masturbating? Oh, sure, as much as the next guy. That was easy. Who doesn't? Yeah. You yeah. know, I warned you. I mean... I, I think I told you verbatim in our mail exchanges that that's the most hardest hitting question you were going to get. Yeah. Oh, God. You're not going to ask the follow-up? Well, I don't know. It's an interesting... I, it's, it's actually an interesting point of conversation because um, I think there's a valid argument that porn and, and jacking off can actually tame the lion in you, if you know what I mean. Thank you. <laughs> this is a thinking man's topic. <laughs> People keep joking about how this podcast is about dicks and fart jokes. It's philosophy. Yeah, well, you can make it philosophical, can't you? I mean, um, every time you beat off to porn, I think you kind of um, you, you you put your libido back to bed, don't you? And, and that's that's energy you could be using to actually get laid. I think it changes your worldview after you do it. <laughs> oh, totally. I'm completely serious. Andrew goes on a fucking journey. I do. I go. <laughs> I support Syria now. I go on a vision quest. Like, like in the moments building up, I'm a fucking raging machine of interlaced priorities and bullshit. And then after it happens for the next thirty minutes, nothing matters. <laughs> no, I, he falls into a fucking true. stupor like a zombie. Well, yeah, I've lost true. my load. And then once you come, and the cloud of jizz dissipates from your brain, you're like, "What did I do?" What is this on the screen? And you close all the tabs and you cancel yeah. downloads and you're ashamed. You sound like the Hulk. As soon as, as, soon as he's done tearing up shit. There will, How did I be get times, here? Um, there will be times I'm scouring the internet dating realms. And I'm like, oh, she's pretty cute. Nice. Maybe we'll go out. And then I jack off and I'm like, God, I just don't give a shit. I hope she never messages me again. Fuck. Well, you're like an angry masturbator. You tell me these stories where, like, you'll have interested girls and then you'll jerk off and then you just hate everything about the girl and wish nothing but ill will towards them. You, like, turn into, like, a witch doctor with, like, a, like a voodoo doll and jerk off and you just start yeah. stabbing it. I mean, my perspectives <laughs> change. In the beginning, it's there's more in, at stake. And then afterwards, <laughs> all, all bets are off. <laughs> my precious semen. This this succubus will never get it from me. You don't deserve it. It's going in my hand. He's not wrong. You kind of turn into Gollum from the Lord of the Rings, just trying to get it, just trying to come. 
No matter what the price. <laughs> Jesus, why does every... Who am I surrounded by right now? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, come no, on. You don't, uh, Charlie, you don't yeah. get like that where like right before liftoff or as you're in the moment, everything is hot to a degree? That's uh, that's a far cry from me turning well, not, into Not everything, but what, what he's trying to say is that one, the thing that is hot to you, you want to get it no matter what. Like you take yeah. it, even if you get arrested and you have to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nick, you, feel free to weigh in on this. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, well, that's the man in you, man. Like every time you jack off to something, you're just you're, you're hanging the you're, you're you're hanging your manhood back up in the closet. So every time I jack you, you off, don't have I'm the drive to go out again. Uh, say again, sorry. Every time I'm jacking off, I jack off the man in me. No, Technically. you. <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah, I think every time you come, you're, you 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 put it out. You 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 hang your manhood your manhood back up. In the closet. <laughs> I, I like that way of putting it. You're, you're putting I, out I the agree. fire. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So that I mean, that can lead into you another. You go back question. to the couch. Yeah, that, that can lead to another question. Do <laughs> well, you no, think that? Uh, no, no, like, wait, 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 Andrew. But what? you're saying that once you ejaculate, you start hating women. I never said that, Charlie <laughs> did. <laughs> well, that's because I've seen it firsthand. You're not going to admit. It. I don't mean to expose you here live on the internet, but when Andrew jerks off, he gets angry. First of all, why are you watching me jerk off? I mean, I don't. Watch. Second of all, it's just your an- anecdotal evidence. I don't get angry. I just get less. I get less. Um, what's the term? I, I put up with less bullshit. Charlie, let me do it this way. If you're on a date with a girl and there's a chance of you fucking, are you not going to ignore more of her flaws than if there's no chance of you fucking? I mean, I, 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 I guess. Yeah, but that's still not a good example because it's not like you were on a date when you jerked off and then you just started hating somebody. <laughs> oh, I got it out of me now. Now I hate it. <laughs> Just leave the dinner date. She's just still at the table. As he's wiping the cum, he's like, do we really need women? <laughs> what, is, what is the point? I mean, it, Why even go on dating websites then at all? If you're just going to like jerk off and hate be, women afterwards. Because, anyway. Jackson, the ones I don't hate afterwards are the ones I want to date. Ooh. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's getting deep. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, no, we're, getting I, philosoph- we're getting Andrew's a little philosophical, side. I'm sorry. No, Andrew never said he hated women. I- I'm on his side. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not hating. That's an over-exaggeration. I don't start hating them like, God, what a horrible person. I might just be exaggerating. <laughs> when, exactly. When I'm shit-talking them, I might be exaggerating, which I'm known to do. But I never actively like go from "oh she's the love of my life" to "wow fuck this bitch." It's 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 just I stop I stop looking at them with rose tinted glasses because I get that like urge out. Yeah. It's gone. Well, especially when you're a teenager, you always you know you don't know like do I love this girl or not? Am I just, just jack off and then you'll know. But then the feelings will come back. Yeah, well, yeah, but those for the, you're only ever lucid like five minutes after you come. Exactly. That's when you're the most, That's my most rational. Productive. Oh my god, Kaya, that's the most f- productive five minutes of my fucking day. It's the only like I, five minutes you should make any decisions. Oh god, I, I I would have all this anxiety and all this shit going on and all these thoughts and then it just <laughs> happens and I'm like, I just don't, like a fucking robot get to work on everything perfectly for five minutes. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. If you out there have not tried jacking off, for the love of god, give it a shot. It's world changing. And if you do catch yourself jerking off and you lose track of time, hopefully you're wearing your movement watches on your jerk off hand and you'll never lose track of time again. Tell them about it, Kaya. Well, as you know, you wear your watch on your left hand usually, so it doesn't really matter what jerking off hand you use to jerk off. Um, movement watches founded by two guys. No, nothing romantic. They were just roommates. They decided they wanted cheap watches, so they made a company, MVMT. And they're selling cheap watches for premium prices. Christmas is over by the time this episode comes out, but you can still get yourself a nice watch. Who gives a fuck? It's your Is that hand. really what it says? They're selling cheap watches for premium prices? Are you sure it's not premium watches for cheap prices? Is that what yeah, I, I said? Yeah, you flipped the script. Yeah, oh, whoops. I, I, you couldn't have slandered them any worse, actually. <laughs> You could have chosen any other combination of words from that sheet and it wouldn't have come out as bad as it did there. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, see, Nick, this is what we do. Uh, this is what you do. This is our professionalism at work. Yeah, the company <laughs> will pay to have their ad read and then we just insult the company. They love it. <laughs> well, it's it, okay. It's cheap. It's a cheap price, but you get a premium watch. And it's cheaper because you don't have to go through a middleman. 
meaning you don't have to buy this thing at a mall. You can just order it to your doorstep like rich people do. They don't do they don't go around shopping for themselves. They have little, you know, uh, it's because it's expensive. What? It's expensive to go out and uh, shop at shops because they have such insane markups. That's what movement doesn't have. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, go to mvmt.com slash official. Get your nice watch for a cheaper price. You can gift it to people. You can get it for yourself. They look nice. They have a slick, thin, simple design. They don't look ugly. They have tons of designs. They also have sunglasses and all that sort of stuff. mvmt.com slash official. That's M for what, Charlie? Mountain. And uh, V for what, Andrew? Uh, Velociraptor. M for what, Jackson? Mountain. <laughs> and T for what, Nick? Tits. <laughs> Dot com slash official. He gets our audience better than we do. <laughs> did you did you say they get fifteen percent off with free shipping and free returns? Uh, no, but no, you have. Yeah, well, get a watch. You get that if you go to that link. Wa- go there. Watch the time elapse as as you're jacking Clean off. Clean design. Great fashion statement. Now, with this offer, is the time to step up your watch game. Does that happen to you too, Andrew, where you like start jacking off and then you're done and you look out and it's dark outside? No. It's, uh, mine's just kind of like, it feels like two separate parts of my day. So, like, the, there's like, it's like different eras of time, like the before jacking off era and the after jacking off era. <laughs> Like before, I feel like there's all this shit to do and there's so many overwhelming things and I have to prioritize and schedule. And then after I do it, I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this can, I'll do this now. This feels fine. Sure. Yeah, it's okay. like taking I your can, pills. I can work on this. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I, I should like get an alarm clock to sound off when I need to jack off. Get on a regular schedule. Which brings me to my next question for Nick. And this, this is a pretty obvious one. What kind of music are you into personally? Are you into the kind of music you make? Do you kind of look for that to listen to for leisure? Or, you know, what's 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 on your iPod, your Fio? Um, a lot of Motown stuff, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't really. Um, I actually don't listen to music very often. I certainly don't listen to pop. That's that's the one thing. That's my kryptonite. I, I will not listen to <laughs> pop music. Um, yeah. No, I, Grande. Oh yeah, Taylor Swift. It's everywhere you go, and that's the funny thing. People think that like the music on the Billboard charts is oh, it's the best. You know, everyone loves it. No, no, no. It's because it's the most heard. You hear it everywhere you go because it's had millions of dollars pumped into the marketing campaigns. So you know, it's the most heard music. It's not the most liked. That's the that that's the great <coughs> delusion. Yeah, um, I mean, it, the charts are just view counts and listen counts. Sure. Don't really, you yeah. don't you think they're designed to be more catchy? I mean, they don't have to be "quote unquote" good, but aren't they designed to be more viral? And- I think they are. Yeah, I think they're formulated. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In fact, they actually read your Shazam statistics to figure out what sort of music are people trying to find, really? and then they formulate music based on those um, statistics. Yeah, they have whole algorithms wow. for it. Yeah, that's not unbelievable. That's that seems like yeah. a pretty obvious thing to do. I, do, I just yeah. didn't know <laughs> that didn't occur to me. The Shazam Shazam was bought recently, right? By Apple. Oh, was it? Apple, I believe. Yeah, I believe really? they've integrated that technology into their Siri. The, the Siri, so you can just go, Siri, what's this song? And oh, so Apple's it bought it. Uh-huh. I believe so. I, I don't... I'll, I'll Google it. I, 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 think, that. I think it's okay on the podcast, Just this is just for future episodes, where we don't fact check everything we say. I think it's all right <laughs> if we get a few things wrong. Well, we get so, we get so much <laughs> shit for it if we do. <laughs> Yeah, the dude is just, you know how many people always call us a Lakaya? The beer hall putsch was no assassination. <laughs> There's always somebody, I mean, which I appreciate. You know, we need a tech I mean, I'm guy. just waiting. I'm just waiting yeah. for the comment because it happens every episode with a guest. That small group that goes, oh, I can't believe you have Pogo on. You fucking blew it. He's never going to talk to you again. Never going to be on the show. He sounded like he had a miserable time. He fucking hated it. I'm his cousin. Really? I know. Oh, uh, Nick, every episode, no matter who it is or what the tone is or whatever, there's some group that's always like, oh, you got PewDiePie on? Oh, man, I feel sorry for him. He obviously had a terrible time. Never going to be on again. You guys were dicks every single wow. time. Yeah. Those are the aristocrats. Yeah, they're the they're the snobs. I was watching him before the podcast, and now all these podcast people are going to ruin his stuff just every time, <laughs> every fucking time. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Nick, do you ever get, like, snobs like that getting on your case? Like, oh, how dare you? The wizard is 
of Oz is a piece of art and you're making pop songs out of it, that sort of shit? Uh, no, no. What, I, I was doing a show in Japan once and some people came up to me and said, oh, you're that guy that makes fun of Disney. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Like, I, I don't make fun of them all. It's just a totally different culture, I suppose, just the way they view it. Um, so, no, the only trouble I ever get into is just when I, I comment on current issues that people think, wow, Nick's, Nick's on that side of the spectrum. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, not going to listen to his music anymore. I seriously get that. It's just, Nick, I'll, uh, uh, I'll openly admit I'm not, I'm not completely up to snuff with your work. I actually didn't know you did live shows. Uh, what Do you DJ or do you play your other stuff or mixes people haven't heard? What, what does it uh, consist of? Yeah, well, picture a DJ, but he's got, uh, instead of two turntables, he's got like a grid of buttons and each button has like a sound on it. And then each button's sort of synchronized to a big video screen behind me. Uh, yeah. So every time I fire something on the grid, it plays the associated video clip. So um, it's very much a light sort of video sound show. Um, sounds really cool. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just a lot of stress. It's like three months of um, preparation and stuff beforehand. And I, can't, I think I'm more of a studio guy. I, don't, I love being, I, I absolutely love, like I can't tell you the, the rush you get from playing your own stuff in front of, you know, a thousand people jumping up and down to it. It's amazing, but it's three months of work that goes beforehand, and then shit always goes wrong every show. So you have a, you know, you come. I close was going to gonna ask what, what goes what goes wrong. What what's some of your worst horror stories there when you're on the stage and something? Oh, happens? geez, I poured beer um, on a laptop once halfway through the show. <laughs> well, no, it sounds like you end. went wrong that show, not your. I equipment. went very wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was the mistake. I shouldn't have been there, and um, <laughs> I should have just had an iTunes playlist. Which is ironically what a lot of DJs do nowadays. It's not what oh, it used yeah, to be no. in the nineties, but uh, they, they just up, jump up and down while music plays behind them, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, back in the old days, when you heard two tracks playing on top of each other and they were in sync, that was a big deal because you didn't have this thing, you didn't have this button on your computer that says sync. You know, you had to like get your hands on those vinyls and actually adjust the speed of this one, adjust the speed of that one, get them playing on top of each other. So it was like a whoa, man. We're actually witnessing this 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 thing happening here, but everything's computerized and digitized now, and I think it's the same thing with CGI. I think it's one of the reasons why I don't like movies much anymore because everything's like blue screen and green screen, and you can see it, and there's just no authenticity to modern art anymore. You don't have to take time; it's all done for you on a computer. I completely agree with that statement as well. Which is, I, have you seen the newer? It's not really new anymore. It's so the newer Mad Max movie. Uh... Carefully. When was it released? Fury Road. It was 2015. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, because that was that was mainly you know actual practical effects and stuff, and I thought that I just, would think so. Yeah, it just yeah. came together beautifully. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, Favorite I didn't movie. care for the story at all, but I thought just visually, it's like wow. Yeah, I want this on a 4K <laughs> disc. Yeah, was it um was it Disney that um. <laughs> To go along with your work, that Disney came out and actually said we're no longer going to do traditional animation movies because computer ones are just cheaper and easier. I think that's everything that ever did traditional animation has said that, not just Disney. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was, I, I think, think so. yeah, but they like officially announced it, like instead of just quietly going about that. I mean, what, what does that mean? Like no that. more cartoons or do I no more traditional, traditional stuff? Yeah, yeah, no more sell cartoons animation, just all three D animations. Just, yeah, that sucks. Just hugely expensive. You don't see it anymore. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's a shame, it's really. Like Thirty people huddled around a table for weeks and weeks and weeks, just drawing pictures. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Does it is a shame. Still hand drawn? No, Simpsons has been digital for a while now. Same with mm. Family Guy. Same every every sitcom cartoon made the switch to digital at some point if they were traditional. Before yeah, but now. you can see the artistry's come out of it. If you compare the Simpsons season two to twenty eight or whatever the hell it is now, it's lost all of its expression. It's fucking horrible. The, the new Simpsons animation is grotesque and awful. If you uh, watch yeah. the opening with Marge at the supermarket, it went from her whipping her head to look at Maggie from like 50 frames to eight. And it's just right. this robotic stiff movement. And it looks like shit. Mm. Yes. I kind of want to compare that now. That yeah, you should cool. look it up. Look it up. Look <laughs> either like an image hurry. set. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure well, it's no, actually 50 time. frames. <laughs> well, it, yeah, but on your own time, look up like an image set from like when shows used to be traditional and if they've moved to digital and you'll just see the fluidity and actual like movement of the animations completely fucking gone. I think one gone. studio who's done that, which was a good choice though, is South Park, where after the very first episode, they decided to 
you know, for the first episode, they used actual cardboard cutouts. Yeah. Manually animated paper. the mm. yeah characters. And then they said, this is ridiculous. Let's just do it digitally. Which is why yeah. also like 20 years later, they were able to release the entire show as uh, in HD in the 16 by 9 format, even the first right. season, which was really interesting to me. Well, that's because the star, the South Park characters just aren't massively animated. They're not yeah, hugely yeah. expressive. They, they're these little stocky things that kind of move and wiggle a little bit. So you don't need you know traditional animation for that. That's but Homer also, Simpson and Krusty the Clown. Yeah, that's like also you, you look why, at Krusty uh, the. Cl- Sorry. No, no, go ahead, Nick. I was just going to say, like, if you compare Krusty the like, man, they went to town animating these characters back then. Like, mm-hmm. he would move <clears throat> with like, like two meters just making one gesture within the space of like two, three frames. Um, they exaggerated everything and you could you, you could tell what personality this character had just by looking at a frame. Whereas now you've got this Beauty and the Beast CG shit you know, and, and you look at like the candlestick guy, whatever his name is, Lip, what's his name? I don't know. It's like Cogsworth, the clock. Fact check. It's it. literally, yeah, I don't know. I don't give a shit. It, it's a <laughs> clock which has got a couple of dots on it for eyes and what you, you can't interpret that character's personality. Whereas you know the the, the candle the candlestick in the traditional one you, you could see oh he's got this kind of personality he's a bit he's a bit studious he's a bit you know a bit pessimistic like this but an actual clock with dots on it you got no idea what character you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of yeah. interesting. It's just- that they're yeah. moving away from that. They're kind of just getting this whole, you know, stay on model and paint by numbers thing when a yes. lot of uh, traditional animation like the Disney style or whatever was known for having certain types of exaggerations, expressions, ways of drawing things. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just far cheaper now. Uh, that Back then, <laughs> that was the only option they had. So they just kind of shelled out the expense. But I mean, it's kind of that way in online shopping as well. Sometimes you just <laughs> shell out top of the line dollars and you don't even know what kind of coupons you could have found if you looked online. Luckily, Honey's there to make it easy and it just does it automatically and shows you all the discounts across the yeah, web. Yeah, tell, tell them about, about it, it, Charlie. Kaya. Nope, tell it about it, Charlie. Kaya, take it away. Charlie, Charlie, go ahead, please. I just, I just did the segways, one, Andrew. That's that's what I'm paid for. So, Honey is a free browser extension. It's available on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. It effortlessly saves you time and money while shopping online at tens of thousands of stores. So, basically, while you shop, the app finds like every working coupon code on the internet. Like as long as it's existed on the internet, it'll it'll find it for you. And then at the checkpoint, it automatically applies it to your cart. Oh. So you're always saving money as long as you click that little Honey button. So always get the best prices, track the prices of any item as well through the Honey little uh, web widget, I believe they're called. Is widget the correct term? I don't keep up with kids these days. Extension, yeah. They, they've called them extensions now. So yeah, through the, through the little extension, you can track the price of any item so that you know that you're getting it at the best price at the current time. So Honey's already saved over hundreds of millions of dollars for over 6 million members. There's no reason not to join today. It'll literally only take you two clicks to start saving money. So you can join today at joinhoney.com slash official. Joinhoney.com slash official. Thanks, Kaya. Uh, this kind of, I just want to bring this kind of full circle though, Nick. So you, you mentioned DJs and how it's kind of just pressing a button these days. And that's kind of the rep a lot mm. of DJs get. Is there any DJs that you respect that you think are doing great work out there? Or do you kind of just have like a disdain for the majority of them? <sighs> well, yeah, I, I have to personally for me, I have to go back a few years like DJ Jazzy Jeff and that sort of thing. Early, early 90s stuff. <laughs> um, those are the guys <laughs> that pioneered this game. Yeah, that's, that's cheating, though. Come on. Everyone loves it Jazzy is, yeah, Jeff. Well, well, yeah, I don't know. Does Fat Boy Slim still do anything or is he kind of out of the game? Oh! <gasps> Well, you, just I, mentioning his name made he, me splooge, so that counts for something. I love Fat Boy Slim. Mm. So mainly mm. the only DJs that you really have respect for are like the actual pioneers. No one, no one in the game these days. No, I think what's happening across every field of art is technology is making everything too easy, and it's everyone can DJ now. Everyone can make a cartoon. Everyone can take a cool picture. You don't have to think. You don't have to have any artistry anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's why there's just more mediocrity now than there ever has been. Um, that's why the early seasons of The Simpsons were amazing. Uh, you know, it's just I think technology's watering it, it down. It also it's making it easy its... for everyone to do. But isn't that also uh, at least that one thing, a good thing that it's making things easier for those who might otherwise not be even in the game? 
at all otherwise like you know music these days you have so much software where somebody in his bedroom can make amazing music and maybe sell it and uh turn it into his job where before he could not have afforded the hardware required or the lessons or you know whatever it may be yeah it it's made it more accessible to people absolutely like there's two mm-hmm. sides to every coin um, like I started out on a PlayStation game, of all things, you know, sitting on a beanbag in the school holidays, making beats and putting them onto cassette. This is before I had an internet connection. Uh, Which game? But at the same time, you know, you log on to SoundCloud and half the stuff is a pre-existing song, like a, a jazz thing from Miles Davis, and someone's just quantized it to a drum loop. Mm. Or and I shit you not, that's half of what's on SoundCloud. S. Sorry? Or heighten the volume every time someone makes the S sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's easy. You don't you don't have to think. You don't have to feel. You just push the button. You drag a loop in. You drag some music in. Hit the quantize button. Upload to SoundCloud. Um, so yeah, it's made it more accessible for everybody. It's also deprived them of the need to um, think and feel and be their own artist. Can you not start off using those tools to begin with, but then, you know, kind of progress into going for those more grassroots methods where you do think and feel and it, be- and it produces better content? I like how thinking Absolutely. and feeling is grassroots now. Yeah, no, that's why you still get so many hardware producers. Yeah. It's, it takes so much more time to make music with an NPC, you know, these these buttons. But, you know, you're thinking about what you're doing and you're feeling it. And you know that if you want to do this, you have to spend this much time. So you'd, you'd better be sure about what you want to do. And um, one of my favorite artists, Prefu73, he does everything on an MPC 1000, which just blows my mind. What What is the uh, NPC 1000? I, I haven't been keeping up with the, the music stuff. <laughs> uh, it's... It, it's pretty much just a box with a ton of buttons on it and a screen, and you can record sounds into it. You can sequence them. You can chop them up. You can do all sorts of amazing things. And uh, Prefu73, he makes a language out of the sounds that he records. He just, I don't know how he does it with this one piece of hardware, but, you know, he's dedicated. And I think if he, if he took his work to a software environment like Ableton or FL, I think his, his work, in his case anyway, would lose its complexity, would lose its soul. Yeah. Well, so thankfully, yeah. none of us will ever have that problem being untalented as we are. Especially when it well, comes to music. All of us, all of us, apart from Nick. Well, yeah. No, I don't. I, I, I don't lay claim to that. Us on the podcast. <laughs> I just got lucky, man. <laughs> no, I, I no, I mean, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like quite the opposite. It doesn't seem like you were just pressing buttons. You were on the PlayStation Two, which is where real men are born. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation One. No, oh, no. oh! Uh, yeah. geez, uh, I should have fact-checked yeah, that, it. That's, a, that's going back. <laughs> they had, they put another one out for PS2 after a few years after, actually. But Wait, uh, which game was it? Oh, god, music. Oh, I, th- I think MTV bought it, so it was MTV Music Generator. I think is what you guys would have called it in the states. Um, Mtv's not what it used to be, hey? <laughs> Ain't that the fucking truth? <laughs> oh no! Yeah. If you mean like non-existent, then yeah. 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 Well, are they still around? I don't think so. Oh, they are. Yeah, but it's oh, very really? left-wing now, which is kind of the other direction to what they used to be. They used to be anti-culture. Now they're very pro-culture. They're very pro-establishment. All I remember of MTV was Pimp My Ride, I think. Ooh, and exactly. Oh, yeah. Crips, Classic show. something. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. music videos. That, that Before the age <laughs> of, you can just go on YouTube and watch anything you want at any time. You'd have to watch MTV and wait for the newest Slipknot song or whatever. Yeah, mm. I remember that fondly. I would be a little boy and Feel Good Inc. by Gorillaz came out oh. and I would watch MTV at like 2 in the morning when they finally played videos and I'd just put it on absentmindedly and finally when that song came on, I was like, fuck yeah, finally. I Something to, good after waiting through all this every shit. Every morning before the drive to school, I'd get up at 6 a.m. and fire on VH1 and MTV and alternate between the two until something came on that I liked. But I'd wow. sit through every fucking yeah. awful song in between though. <laughs> like any radio station yeah. Yeah. so the next mm. question I'd like to ask you though Nick is there a project one in particular that you f- are the most proud of you put a ton of work into it it came out beautifully just anything that you're extremely proud of that you'd like to talk about your magnum opus 
Oh, I think Data and Picard, without a doubt. Oh. The uh, so it's it's a remix of uh, the characters uh, Captain Picard, played by Patrick Stewart, and um, Data, uh, who's played by Brent Spiner from Star Trek: Next Generation, the series from the eighties. Uh, and um, I found a replica of the Starfleet uniform. I got a green screen from a, a, a rental place here, set it up in my living room, had a whole bunch of lights. And I tried to recreate the lighting situations of all these scenes from the show because I wanted to composite myself into all the scenes and make it look like I'm the one, you know, playing these characters and singing along and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, I found the actual uh, makeup that they used to create uh, Jesus. The Commander Data. <laughs> the fuck? Jesus. I also found yeah. their used wow. underwear. <laughs> yeah, I found their homes and I asked if this was okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, Data always yeah, used to have I that caked on makeup, though. The whole layer Say again, of it. sorry, Kai? Data always used to have this thick layer of makeup, too. He did, yes. Oh. Do they still make yeah. Star Trek movies? When, when did the last one come out? It was the, ass, wasn't it? The newest it? one came out like a couple months ago, Kai. Yeah, and... Discovery. Was that Into Darkness, or was that before? No, no Discovery, if you mean... Exactly, you, you never yeah, hear about that series. garbage anymore. Well, yeah. I mean, we 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 already knew about that because of the dude who edited out the gay characters. We talked about oh, no. that. It's just yeah. no, no. Okay, we're talking about different things. That's the series he edited. <clears throat> there was a what, movie. Was, oh the, yeah, the movie oh, was the a couple years he, ago. Yeah, and they all three of them were huge blockbusters. Well, no, the third one not so much. Based on really, the, based on my inside Hollywood sources, I, I was told it didn't do very we well. We could always fact check. No, no let's, leave, let's leave it up to interpretation. A nice all little right. cliffhanger. Was and, was that Into Darkness? Mm-hmm. I'm going crazy here. It's, it's Into no. Darkness. Okay. It, I into, think. No, no, it's no, not. Into Darkness is two. There's yeah. a third one after that. I think Thir- it's Beyond. Yeah, it's like... No, it's like... It's two words. I think Beyond is one of them. It's like Beyond Turbo. Beyond Darkness? Beyond Edge something. Don't you... I, I'm here in typing. <laughs> No fact checking. No. God damn it! But I wanna, I wanna, I wanna auto, I wanna slap Charlie so hard, please, Jackson. <laughs> God forbid I get my Star Trek movie names wrong. Christ, you, give it to me, Andrew. You know what I want to know? It is Star Trek Beyond. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! You dummy! You don't know Star Trek names. What a nerd! Wubba lubba dub. So, <laughs> so you a massive fan of Star Trek, Nick? Uh, yeah. Look, I've seen Next Generation three times now. Every episode. Ooh. It's uh, it's amazing. It's one of the last things I've seen that actually has real character-driven stories. Like I was watching Rogue One. Uh, oh God! This, Sorry. Yeah, this yeah. sounds like we have a pretty unanimous decision on that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, terrible movie. <laughs> it's it's the least character-driven Star Wars movie I've ever seen. Was that a doubt? Yeah, and to me that's boring. I, I I don't care about events. I care about characters you know having to change yeah, you know, especially change especially in star wars it's such a odd juxtaposition yes. of what was a very character driven <laughs> series yeah like luke skywalker spends the whole th- trilogy in uh doubting himself you know and just sucking at what he's trying to do and here you've got this little scrumpet called ray you know she's never piloted anything that can leave the ground and all of a sudden she's piloting the falcon better than han solo and she's you know, manipulating the minds of the of the of the stormtroopers. You know, she's she's basically up there with Obi Wan from day one. It's just yeah. what is going on? Like the universe is dropping everything into this character's lap. Where's the journey? Where's the conflict? Um, I, love I just the, can't uh, root for her. I love the uh, Mr. Plinkett argument on why the Star Wars movies, the the bad ones, have problems, and it's uh, describe a character without saying what their job is or what they're wearing. And it's, oh, it's not only one. can I not do that for Rogue One, I couldn't even tell you any of the fucking characters' names from that movie. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? That is... Well, the, ro- the robot had the most personality out of anyone in the movie. And yeah. Still- yeah. And even <laughs> then, I don't know his name. I also don't know his name. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was the only kind of care. good character, and even then, it's like... Eh. They don't make me care about the characters, so I don't get to know them and meh. Meh. I, I couldn't even make it past halfway in Rogue One, and I probably won't see The Last Jedi because I think Star Wars now is a box-ticking, pandering marketing machine. They already mm. signed for a yeah. new trilogy too, right? Really? With the director from The Last Jedi, yeah. I didn't uh, know that shit. It's, it's yep. sad more than anything. It's a machine. Yeah. It's just it's It's not even wasted potential because they make so much money. It's just... 
It just kind of is. It's just there. Well, if you know? if there's any good news to come of it, people are opening their eyes like, wow, this kind of fucking sucks. Like, look at uh, look at the Last Jedi reviews now. Uh, the audience yeah. review is like 50s across the board. I mean, that's something. Yeah. Usually Star mm, Wars is yeah. soft cock in hand. We're going hard. This is a great movie. At least now people are like, well, it wasn't that great. And here's why. Yeah. What sucked so hard about yeah. it? Nick Jackson here is our uh, local Star Wars correspondent. He loves it. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the Last Jedi. It still got some serious flaws. Oh, uh, you enjoyed it? Pl- I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. It's still I it's still I'd give it a seven yeah, a, like a seven out of ten, and that's fairly generous. Even that, it's just it is really just pandering so, at this point. Jackson, so what's like a, five a five out of ten, 10 in your mind? Well, I was gonna say it's gonna be like a five out of ten, but if that was if it wasn't Star Wars, yeah, probably if if it if it wasn't Star Wars, probably five out of ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> People make it like five out of ten is this. Oh, it's this terrible score, but that's perfectly average. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like yeah. numerically speaking, you know, it's not a bad score. It's just what it is. Like, I don't know how much you guys are into games, but yeah, yeah. You know, they, oh, that's the biggest problem. I think Anything it's, below it's a so nine is a terrible piece of yeah, shit. It's, I think it's born out of the contractual obligations they have. Like if. If a video game review company is paid by a big game company and they have to give it an eight, then of course if they mm. give it a five, it's considered like, you know, beyond the pale. What are you trying to say about our game? How dare you take that down and give us a seven yes. at least? You know, yeah. that sort of shit. And the problem is everyone looks up to GameSpot and IGN. You know, you can't just say, Oh, I'm just I'm just gonna ignore what they say because hundreds of thousands of people don't. And here they are it's giving AC origin. Yeah, it's exactly. And here they are giving AC Origins a 7 and No Man's Sky a 7. It's like, no, they're worlds apart. I'm not saying Origins is great, but No Man's Sky is not a 7. I'm sorry. It disappointed everybody who backed it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a 4. That's a 3. <laughs> was, sorry. but It was the yeah. shallowest Star Wars at the moment. It is awful. No Man's Sky. Even the updates just do nothing to increase their no. game's enjoyment at all. It's a bad game. It is, yeah. yeah. I wanted to love it so much. I think it everyone did. The idea is amazing, yeah. And I'm sure yeah. it is like technologically impressive what they've done there, but it doesn't translate well into an enjoyable experience. I mean, their idea no, well, that's was what's... impressive, but I don't think the execution was. Yeah, I mean, not only that, yeah, the problem is it. they lied about a lot of stuff. There was like they had the idea where the universe was so procedural and so unique and random that uh you would never ever meet other players but then two guys completely confirmed they were on the same exact planet in the same exact spot <laughs> and the way that they yeah. were able to hold up that claim was they edited the game so you just could not physically see or interact with other players yeah uh, proce- procedural is not a good thing either i can't i, I don't know why it's I, always I, positive it, yeah uh, it, it baffles me well, whenever it, it they use it be. as like a selling tool it really can't it ha- I mean, like in, in an well, entertainment sense, be. it's got to be curated. Yeah, I mean, like look how? At, well, okay, it depends on the Isaac. game. A procedural Pac-Man yeah. would be okay. Yeah, Binding of Isaac is all procedurally generated levels, completely random each time. But would and it be game, better curated? No, the game sells itself on the it. random element because you get different items and different paths each time. That's a good example of it. Bad example is Man's Sky, where it's all the. Yeah, exactly. I well, would maybe like that game by that point. I mean, like, would would that be good? <laughs> If Skyrim was procedural, because I, I'm not sure there's as much immersion in a procedural world as there is in yeah. an artistically designed world. Exactly. That's f- that's fair. When it comes that's to Skyrim, fair. it's more what am I playing it on? Am I playing it on my Wi-Fi shoes? Am I playing it on my microwave? It's just a matter of where is Skyrim released. Yeah. I, I think it depends on the game. And if you need a game that mm. needs direction, like No Man's Sky or Skyrim, any of those, then I think procedurally generation does not work for it at all. Did you guys see pub pub? This is a bit of a offshoot, but did you guys see PUBG? How well that performs on the Xbox One? <laughs> oh God! What a, what an embarrassment! What a genuine five, embarrassment! Five frames a second. They pushed it for their Christmas lineup on the Xbox One X, the most powerful console in the world. Five <laughs> frames a second. Yeah. What Not only that, that, textures up. take a, a solid like five minutes to load in after you land, so you can it walk through walls. It is such a fucking joke it's such a scam how these developers are able to charge what they charge for no, such unoptimized i have garbage. nothing but respect for the developers go on the the battleground subreddit i love the xbox one version is it better than pc i'm having a blast are you fact That's checking fan bases I, I i've been on that fucking subreddit since the release of that catastrophe <laughs> 
It is awful. I have played like 10 minutes. It is unplayable. I don't know how anyone can play, play it. They like, can, but they, they love it. Yeah, of course. I, well, I wanted to play it with my brother. He's a massive... Wow. Yeah, it's okay, well, fan. they got your money then. At the end of the day, you're the stooge. Well, I did, well yes, I should have done my research. If I hadn't known how... <laughs> badly it performed then yeah i wouldn't have bought it welcome to this christmas man yeah that's gonna fucking sell yeah i think my favorite thing that's in the game on the xbox one x is full second delays between pushing buttons and things happening on screen yeah that's called input lag yeah not not even not even fucking client lag where it's with other people it's literally you pull the trigger to fire and a full measurable second later the gun fires yes that's it's, that is my exactly number less. one pet peeve. Yes, I cannot ridiculous. play a game like that's, that's that. Based, that's based on your TV, though. No, it's mm, not. It's, yeah, it's no. just the game, dude. In <laughs> some people's cases, it is, but TV, not on my man. TV, man. No, you, you put your PC, your TV into game mode. You also change the input type to PC, which takes out a whole bunch of the extra processing, you know, reduces input lag. Yeah, um, some TVs don't have that, though. I know one of my old TVs definitely didn't have that. Yeah, it has nothing it to do with the TV. What? No, it does. It, it, well, some, especially modern TVs, they add a lot of post processing that slows yes. down input time. Yes, but game mode. Most TVs if have the a game TV. Mode. If the TV does have game mode, then yeah, yeah, yeah. You Most of them nowadays of do. Um, but yeah, TVs definitely have a varying sense of input lag. Yes, they do. But if you play the new Dishonored, Dishonored 2, that's exactly the problem you're describing. I was streaming my first playthrough, and within the first few seconds, I'd hit the thumbstick. I'd wait. I'd literally wait, and then the camera would move. I, you can't yeah. play a game like that. No, like I'm sorry, but yeah. no, you're, you're, everything feels like it weighs 500 kilograms or pounds or whatever you guys use over there. It's just impossible to interact with things. Yeah, like why don't they? Why don't they iron that out before they release it? Money, man. Uh, they pushed it for the Christmas lineup. Do you know how many parents of how many fucking micro penis kids yeah. are going to be getting this game for Christmas? It's already sold over a million copies. Oh, I, believe. I, I am not surprised in the slightest. They see their favorite streamer, Dr. Disrespect, in between cheating on his wife. He's playing pub, making it look fun. All these kids are going to ask for pub for Christmas, but all they have is the fucking shit-ass Xbox. They're going to get a $60 pub piece of shit. It's sad, hey, man, but don't, it makes don't a lot like of money. Kick mm. a man when he's down, so he cheated, but he like publicly cried. Doesn't yeah, that it exonerate makes it okay. him? I'm, I'm, I mean, his thought yeah, process he's, he's was innocent. just... It was, who do I tell about this affair I'm having on my wife? Oh, how about my audience of kids? That'll be good. I honestly can't understand why he chose to do that. It makes sense from no logical perspective. Dude, I don't know. Yeah. At some point, I feel like people need God again in their lives. Like, you need Jesus, you know, that meme. Where you go to your local church and confess your sins. Instead, they don't get that, like, uh, and they, you have to go online and get the same catharsis, confessing their sins to a bunch of children. It was a really That's nice crazy. It was a nice plot twist to the 2017 internet soap opera though. I did enjoy it. I, it I really did not expect that from him. I well, not saying that I didn't expect cheating from him, but I didn't expect his career to go down this year. He was on like top of the world. Oh no, his, this, go his character arc in this this season was pretty fucking remarkable. Like fastest growing Twitch channel and then all yeah. of a sudden out of the blue it just goes on stream and fucking breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After being award given awards for it too. So, and be, becoming Game the review. new literal face of Twitch. Now, Nick, you you mentioned streaming. Uh, do you stream on Twitch often? No, man, I don't. No, or YouTube. I think you have to be an entertainer to be a good streamer. Like you got to be a Robin Williams. You got to be a Jim Carrey. You can't just be some schmo gamer. You yeah. know, you, you have to be able to make people laugh. No. And the other thing is, you have to be able to play and commentate at the same time. That's not as easy as it sounds. I think it depends. I think there's definitely an angle of that, but also if you're like just good enough at a game, if you're a pro streamer, you could be the most deadpan, boring piece of shit on the internet and people will still flock to you. Yeah, if, if you're fucking good at it. Sure. Yeah. Or if tits. Different audiences. Or if you have tits, yeah, exactly. Tits are the biggest help, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to gain <laughs> weight. So when I do turn on my face cam, it's going to rock people's worlds. You'll immediately you get have banned. Your movies. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't the tits Hassan wants. Andrew's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I. I mean, we can start to wrap up here. It's been a little over an hour. We usually only go a little over an hour, but I would like to ask a, a couple more like questions geared towards you and the music world. Since sure, you're the first, man. Yeah, you're the first like real musician we've had on here who does make professional sounding stuff real concerts and stuff 
when it comes to uh, music making, you like it? You enjoy it? You like sports and stuff? I don't have any good what? questions, and I was just trying to get something out there. But oh, do you enjoy it? Do I like it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Nick, let me let me step in. I'll, I got an actual question. There we uh, go. So what? What what would you say is the best way of finding a genre for a budding music maker? Just kind of finding that own voice in what you create in your sounds and not, you know, following trends or any of that. Well, don't follow trends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good enough. No, I just mean like are there any are there any techniques or things to look out for that you think can help develop a sound? What things that they should focus on practicing? Well, I think I was lucky because I didn't have YouTube staring me in the face every day when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, internet for me didn't come along for, for a few years. So before that, it was just I had the radio um, and that was it. And so I kind of – and the only people who ever heard my stuff was me and maybe my family because I had it on cassette every now and then. So I was kind of in this really dark little corner where all I could do was just do what I felt like and – explore and stuff like that i mean I've, I've always loved house music so i always kind of went in that direction um hmm. so then do you have any really strong influences or do you not really think yes absolutely um there's a guy called akafin who i'm a hu- who's inspired me massively when i was a teenager a few years after and he makes music with well he made music with nothing but sounds from the radio and um it, like literally nothing but, and it just it just sounds it just sounds incredible, and that inspired me big time. Um, yeah, look, uh, it's kind of weird. Like on the one hand, I'm saying don't follow trends. On the other hand, I'm saying find your influences. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I the, mm. I see the upset of not having the internet to a degree because let's say you, if you're a young guy, let's say, and you want to get into the making music or art or any other form of content creation and you put it online and the first thing you get is a dislike and people are shitting on you and yelling at you. Yeah. It might discourage you, whereas if you don't have that, you, you get to stew in your own juices a little longer, mature and keep at it. Yeah. Not get yeah. discouraged. So that might be an upside. People get too easily discouraged these days. One fucking mean tweet yes. and you know, you, you're harassed and you're forced off the platform and you commit suicide. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. I think you just got to surround yourself with what you love. That's the main thing. Don't surround yourself with what other people like. Surround yourself with what you like. That's that's the main thing. And that's that has to come from inside of you because like we were saying earlier, you know, the Billboard charts is it's not the most popular music, it's the most sold. So don't surround yourself with that. You, you everyone has a kind of sound that they love or that they like everyone does and you know it when you hear it and that's what you need to surround yourself with if you want to make music because i think to be truth i think to be totally honest i'm not sure anything really is 100% original i mean it's hard to be with yeah like like you mentioned earlier the accessibility to pretty much everyone out there obviously someone's going to have a very similar sound to somebody else just a Absolutely. matter of who catches on first there's nothing inherently um, wrong about that. I mean, someone could have a very similar sound to you. They could do it just as well, and someone would like that music. I, I see nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, that's it. Look, if I had a son or a, or a daughter and I wanted my child to make music, uh, and or let's say that the, the child really, really wants to make music, I wouldn't surround my child with, you know, um, YouTube or, or, or Twitter or anything like that. I'd actually make an effort to keep that shit away. Because uh, cause I, I want that person to develop his or her own sound. Um, and I think that's kind of hard to do nowadays when you've got this shit in your pocket 24-7 and, you know, Taylor Swift's yeah. playing everywhere you go, fucking Justin Bieber's doing, playing everywhere you go. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want my kids on YouTube either. No, I don't think no, anybody no. can blame no you. Way. No. Yeah. It's a dangerous well, place. I mean, yeah. Well, that piece of parenting advice is probably a good place to end this. Yeah, I think that's a good point to make. So what's in the pipeline? Is there anything you'd like to shout out, plug anything? You're more than welcome to. Yeah, uh, next album's on its way out. Uh, Hopefully soon. I'm getting some album art made for it. Uh, There's a lot of tracks people are demanding to have on Spotify and iTunes and stuff. So that's coming uh, hopefully for the new year. So fingers crossed. We'll see. 
All right. That sounds good. Yeah, where, where can they go to find you? What, cha- uh, what just, channel, Twitter, and stuff like that? Oh, uh, really? You want me to give links? Uh, well, yeah, go for it. Sure. To. If, okay. well, if you want. Your time to All shine. Right. Yeah, uh, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's uh, twitter.com forward slash Nick Bertke. That's N-I-C-K-B-E-R-T-K-E. Uh, I couldn't get Pogo anymore, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and then just type youtube.com forward slash Pogo and that's where you'll find me. Beautiful. Go yeah. there, check out Nick. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, well, we appreciate no, you Thank you on. for coming on. Yeah. Spending some time. Oh, with my us. pleasure. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, and thank you to everyone for listening to this, whether it be iTunes, YouTube, wherever you're listening to this, we appreciate it greatly. You can head on over to our Patreon if you want to help support us. That would be great. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.